In this video, we are going to talk about sine and cosine waves, in particular the sine and cos function in GLSL and how they are useful. So before we continue, I want to give thanks to Khan Academy for their circuit analysis course, which I found really helpful when learning how the sine and cosine waves actually work. So let's go ahead and discuss this in detail. And there's gonna be a lot of maths involved or math if you're American. So please don't be put off by it. We're just gonna to touch up on it for a few minutes and then get into some code. So for those of you who can remember learning trigonometry back at school, you might remember this phrase, Sokatoa, which are basically ways of working out the lengths of certain lines in a right angle triangle. So the A here stands for adjacent, the O stands for opposite to the angle, and the H stands for hypotenuse. And if you wanted to say, work out what the hypotenuse was, but you have just the A and the angle, you could use the cos function, where you could do A times the cos of the angle, and, and it will give you the value of H. Similarly, you could work out the opposite if you have just the hypotenuse, or you could work out the hypotenuse if you had the opposite with the sine as well. These are all ways of working out the lengths of a right angle triangle if you just have the angle value and one length. So imagine we had a circle and we drew one line on the circle. We could go about working the length of the circle using the sine, cos and tan function I mentioned here. So with the circle, you could draw lines here or here. Let's just focus on this one for now. And this will be the angle, this will be the opposite and the adjacent. And instead of having a hypotenuse, we'd have the radius, which will be one. These are the angles going from 0, 90, 180, 270 to 360. And we have the same as pi. So 0 to half pi to pi to 3 over 2 pi and 2 pi. So in this example, if we wanted to work out the length of the opposite, we know the angle. We know that the radius is 1 because we've said so here. So we could use the sine method to work out what O is. And similarly, if we wanted to work out A, we could use the cosine. And as you can see here, this is how you'd achieve that. Ignore the tan for now. But as you can see, if you wanted to work out y, you could do r times sine the angle, which would give you y. And if you wanted to work out the x value, you could do r times cos the angle, which would give you x. So cos is for x and sine is for y. Now imagine if that line we drew here, imagine if that was rotating around the circle and we worked out the value of y for each position that the line was in and we plotted it on the graph to create this wave. This is what it would look like. So this is a typical sine wave and what it's basically done and the way we've achieved it is by plotting each value of y along this whole circle depending on where the line is. And we could do the same for a cos or cosine where this yellow line moves we could plot the value and we'd make this cosine graph. Now, seeing it in pictures doesn't really do it any justice. So I'm gonna try and show it to you in motion. And we can look at a sine graph here. As you can see, as this line moves around, the Y value changes and it plots a graph that moves like so. This is a cosine graph on the X axis. And this is them both together. So here is a GIF of them both working together. As you can see, this is sine on the Y axis. This is cosine on the X axis, but it's been rotated by 90 degrees to see them both working on the same axis, which is Y. So if this line for both of them is zero, this would be one here, and this would be minus one. So as you can see, they both dip in and out of zero and get close to the one and minus one on a graph and they're almost going in opposite directions. So when this one is in minus one, that one is in one, and when this is in one, that one's in minus one. So we can use that to our advantage in writing GLSL code. And let me show you how to do that right now. Okay, so we have this blank document here. Um, let's just call it test for now. I'll probably delete it later on. Test four dot frag. What we could do, I've got my circle here that we did a while ago with the border. I'm gonna copy and paste a few things. 
So let's copy that. Let's copy this U resolution and we're going to borrow a different uniform, which is a float. And this will be U time, which is the time in milliseconds from when we open the graph up. I'm going to create our um, entry function and create a variable called color, which will be a float of 1.0. And all I'm going to do is get the GL frag code. So I GL frag color, get the vec4 of the color, and I'm going to leave the opacity as one for now and grab a vec3 of color. And as you can see, this will just give me white. So what I could do with this U time, as we saw in the presentation, that they go between one and minus one. And as we know, one is white, zero is black, and minus one is also black. So if we add a sign here to time, this should fade between white and black. So let's do that now. As you can see, this fades in between black and white and we can make it go a bit faster or much faster. And we can use that to our advantage in GLSL because anything that has a value that changes, we can add a sign or cos function to it and it can simulate some animation. So let's have a look at the circle that we made. And as you can see in here, whenever we change this position, it will move our circle. So let's grab our floats U time uniform and we'll see what happens when we pass that into here. Okay, it just moves in one direction. Now if we add a sine function to it, you'll see it goes up to one all the way down to zero one and then keeps doing that forever almost. And in our diagram back here, as, as time goes on, it actually moves anti-clockwise. As time goes on, it will keep going in circles over and over again. So as time is going up, as we look at this canvas for a bit longer, it will keep doing the same thing over and over again. And what we can do as this is a VEC2, it requires two values. So it's using the sine value twice. So this is essentially the same as that. But if we make one cos, and as you can see in this diagram, cos is kind of going in the opposite direction. We can make this cos, and you can see they're both doing two different things. So one is going in one to minus one, the other minus one to one. And because of their opposite actions, you can kind of fake a rotation. So if this was our graph, this is just the positive side. So y, x, one up here, zero down here. We've got the minus here which you can't see, but it's kind of rotating around a whole graph. And we're gonna use this to our advantage when it comes to making our shimmer animation for GLSL. So this will come in very handy. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. And if you did, please like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.